Hey guys, this is Emerald Fire, and today I have a pretty interesting video for you. As you can tell by the image on the screen, this video involves some math. Actually, a lot of math. But I think what you're going to find is that it's worth it, because what I'm going to teach you how to do is use the location of one stronghold to find the general area of both of the other strongholds in the world. Now, this calculation doesn't give you an exact location, but it will put you in the general area so that when you throw an ender eye to try to find the stronghold, it won't accidentally go towards another stronghold. And the location that it puts you in should be within a few hundred blocks of the actual location. So if you use one of those x-ray machines, you may even be able to see it underground right away. So, the way this works is trigonometry. One property of stronghold generation is that they all generate within a certain distance from 0, 0. Not from spawn, from the actual coordinates 0, 0. Which makes this a little bit easier than if it were at spawn. So, all strongholds generate within the radius of 1,152 blocks, represented by this green circle, and each of the tick marks on the graph is 100 times its value. So this is 100, 200, etc. And they also generate outside the radius of 640 blocks. So all three of the strongholds are located within this ring. And also, one more thing about strongholds. They are each generated at equal distances from each other, or about equal distances, which means they will be at an, about an equilateral triangle around 0, 0. So, if you draw the triangle, they should be about here and here. So, that's easy to see if the stronghold's at the top but if it's somewhere, say, over on a diagonal, it might not be so easy to find the location of the other two strongholds just by glancing. Yeah, maybe somewhere over here, maybe somewhere over here, but if you want a more exact calculation, we can use some trigonometry. What we have to do first is find this angle so that we know what angle it is on the circle, and the way these are generated is that they're each 120 degrees from each other. That would make the equilateral triangle of the points. So once we find the first angle, we can add 120 degrees to find where the second one is, and another 120 degrees to find where the third one is. And it won't be anywhere along this position. It would be within this radius. So that's why it's going to come pretty close. Now, I've named the angle theta, that's just standard notation with an unknown angle, and that's what this symbol means. We will start by drawing a right triangle, and of course the Pythagorean theor theorem excuse me, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We'll use that to find the lengths of the sides, which is the first step to finding the angle. So, we'll add in the, the side measures. Now, I put this point at negative 400 and 700. Y will represent Z in this case. So, this isn't actually height. This is Z because in Minecraft, X and Z are the coordinates for the flat world. So, uh, side A is negative 400 and side B is 700. And so we'll substitute those in, and we'll get c equals this, and so we'll square those two, add them together, and c equals the square root of 650,000. The next step is to find the sine of theta. If we find the sine of theta, we can also find the inverse sine of theta, and therefore solve for theta. And the sine is given by opposite over hypotenuse. Now the opposite of theta would be b, and the hypotenuse would be c. So therefore, we'll take 700 over square root of 650,000, which we already found c to be, and we'll put that in for sine of theta. Then, in order to solve for theta, we'll have to get it out of the sine, so we'll take the inverse sine 
of both sides. These two cancel out and theta equals the inverse sine of 700 over the square root of 650,000. Now I know you could simplify this with a calculator to get a numerical value, but it won't be exact. It will only be a decimal approximation. So for as long as we can, we're going to stick with exact values here as we go on. And if you are following along with a calculator, uh, it may help, but I think overall you should watch the video first and then pause it if you need to do these steps so you'll know what the general idea is. Next, what we have to do is solve for x and y in terms of theta. That way, we can later solve for x and y in terms of theta plus 120 degrees. So, first we'll solve for x. Adjacent equals a equals x, which is right here. That's the adjacent to the angle, and it's also the x-coordinates. And the hypotenuse, as we've already said, is c. So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, cosine equals x over c. Therefore, x equals c times cosine of theta. The same thing goes for y, except that the opposite is b, instead of the adjacent, because we're using sine. So sine theta equals y over c. y equals c times sine theta. OK, now here's where we'll solve for the second x coordinates. Now we want to add 120 degrees to this angle because we know that each of the strongholds is about 120 degrees from each other. So uh, we'll, we already solved for theta about three slides ago and we know that x1, which is the original coordinates here, equals c times cosine theta and so our second x coordinate that we're trying to find, which will be somewhere over here, is cosine theta plus 120 because we're taking the degrees of the angle and adding 120 degrees. And if we substitute in our known value, this is the stuff we get. We'll just leave that as it is now because that's exact as it's going to get. Or rather, it's as simple as it's going to get while remaining exact. Now, why? We'll do pretty much the same thing. We'll add 120 to the angle, and we'll substitute in our values. Now, all that's left to do is substitute in for c, for x, and for y. And when you type all this into your calculator, you get the coordinates. Or do you? If you've been following along this far on your calculator, you may notice that when you input these equations into your calculator, you don't quite get the thing that was expected, but that's because of the location of the second red dot. You see, the way the inverse sine function works on your calculator is that the domain is from negative 1 to 1, which means that it'll only return values on this side of the graph. See, I even shaded it over here. This is where it does not give signs. So, what you would have to do if the dot you're looking for is on this side, you would have to make sure you get the right one by subtracting the one from this side. Uh, you subtract the value from 180 degrees because that's one half circle here. To account for and automate this process, I have adjusted the formulas so that if x is negative, because that's where it does not work, then it will subtract the value from 180 and if x is positive it will not do that and I've done some absolute value trickery to get that to work and so if you plug the numbers of the coordinates of the stronghold into uh, x1 and z1 for all of these things you'll get the x2 and the z2 of the area around where you need to search for the next stronghold. So if you are using a graphing calculator, I use the TI-84, TI-83 works, and any of those, and then it would look like, oh hold on, well first you would want to store your x values and your z values and uh, use them later in the equation, but this is what it would look like on your calculator, and this is a, and uh, oh, <laughs> and of course make sure it is set to degree mode because we are using degrees and now this is what it looks like in your calculator if you want to get the coordinates and this 
is typed on a TI-84. It would look the same on a TI-83 and some other models, but this is what it would do. You would type all this junk in exactly as it is here, and then you would get your answer. So now that we've got all our formulas straight and <laughs> we have thoroughly delved into the mathematics of trigonometry, let's load up a new world and test this by finding a stronghold and then plugging in the formula and see how close we can get to another stronghold. Okay, so I've loaded up a new world and I found the first stronghold. Now I'll use these coordinates to try to get close to the second stronghold. Okay, I ran the numbers and I came to this location. Now I'll throw some enderize and see how far off we actually are from the stronghold. I'm now at the second stronghold, and it is some distance from the point we predicted, as you can see by the coordinates on the screen, but that was to be expected. To put it into perspective, I'll now go back to the graph and plot the points. I've plotted the points, and here are the final results. The red is the location of the first stronghold we found, the yellow is the expected location of the second stronghold, and the blue is the actual location of the second stronghold. In reality, it was about 400 blocks away from what we expected, but it's still a lot closer than to this one, and it is in the general area. So if you really don't have anything to start with, this will get you close enough so that it will be the closest stronghold and the ender eyes should lock onto the stronghold. And although it isn't perfect, this method is a lot more reliable than just blindly throwing ender eyes and hoping they'll take you to an end portal that you haven't already been to. So, I guess that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting, I hope you learned something, and until next time, goodbye!